They screamed as the Empire butchered them, slaughtered them, hunted them to extinction. The defenseless Denobulans were abandoned by the galaxy to die, until one human risked everything to save them. The stench of death hung heavy over the rubble-strewn streets of Denobula Prime's once great cities. Linux picked his way through the debris, his rail-thin frame trembling. Scars from the Empire's brutal assaults crisscrossed his exoskeleton. He approached a shadowed alley wary of Imperial drones. Bruce, Linux clicked in Denobulan, I need your help. Her grizzled human mercenary emerged from the darkness, a pulse rifle slung over his shoulder. Bruce Scorer was ex-Special Forces, his body a roadmap of old battles. The war's lost, Linux, your people are finished, Bruce grunted. Not yet. The Empire's rounding up the last Alliance holdouts. They'll publicly execute them, my mate and hatchlings included. Our leadership slaughtered. Bruce's eyes narrowed. I'm not risking my hide for a lost cause. Linux leaned in, desperation etched in his face. We have a secret, Bruce, an ancient weapon hidden for millennia. If the Empire finds it when we fall, they'll conquer the galaxy. Untold trillions will suffer. The human clenched his jaw. I need proof, otherwise no deal. Linux held up a cracked data pad. A garbled audio recording played, Imperial generals gloating about seizing the weapon after the executions. Bruce's blood ran cold as he listened to their plans to subjugate every star system, unopposed. Anything, everything I have, just save them, save us all. Linux sagged against the wall, a broken creature. Bruce shouldered his rifle and strode into the apocalyptic hellscape. He had a job to do. The fate of a galaxy hung in the balance, and he was the only one who could tip the scales. Failure was not an option. Back in their makeshift safe house, Bruce and Linux huddled around a flickering hollow table, plotting their desperate gambit. The Imperial prison camp glowed an angry red on the map, bristling with anti-personnel turrets and squads of gene-modded super-soldiers. I'll go in as a prisoner, Bruce said. Let them capture me, rough me up a bit. Once I'm inside, I'll break free and fight my way to your family. You'll be my exfil in a stolen transport. Linux nodded, his mandibles clicking nervously. A bold plan, but you'll need an edge to pull it off. He led Linux to a hidden crate, opening it to reveal a treasure trove of human weaponry. A gleaming, powered exoskeleton suit stood at the center, all sleek lines and coiled potential violence. Bruce ran a hand over its surface almost lovingly. Reverse-engineered this beauty from Imperial Salvage myself. Enhances strength, speed, reflexes. I'll be a goddamn superhuman in this thing. Next, he hefted a long sniper rifle, a twin-barreled monster. Armor-piercing hypersonic rounds, this'll punch through their tin can helmets like tissue paper. He slung a boxy assault rifle over his shoulder. Adaptive ammo modification system. Can switch between armor-shredding, incendiary, or cryo-rounds on the fly. A brutal-looking shotgun followed. Mag-accelerated flechettes with a plasma jacket for close encounters. He strapped a bandolier of pulsing grenades across his chest. Plasma charges. Dial the yield up, vaporize a whole squad. Finally, he twirled a pair of long machetes, their monomolecular edges glinting viciously. For when I want to get real personal-like. Linux gaped at the arsenal, eyes wide. I had no idea humans possessed such weapons. The Empire dismisses your kind as primitives, not worthy of notice. He stood, rolling his shoulders. All right, enough chatter. Time to get this show on the road. Linux, I'm going to need you to mess me up good. Got to look the part. The spindly Denobulan hesitated only a moment before resolutely slamming a bony fist into Bruce's face. Again and again he struck until the human was a mass of bruises and blood, his ribs cracked one eye swollen shut. Pulling himself painfully to his feet, the battered mercenary limped off into the hellish night, heading for the distant lights of the prison camp. At the front gate, he collapsed theatrically, raising his hands in surrender. Don't shoot, he wheezed at the startled guards. I'm a defector. Got valuable intel to trade, just want to cut a deal. Roughly, they hauled the wounded man to his feet, dragging him inside the camp walls. As the gate slammed shut behind them, 
Bruce allowed himself a tiny smirk through cracked and bloody lips. The poor bastards had just let the wolf into their hen house, and now he was going to burn it all down around their ears. Bruce was dragged into a dimly lit interrogation chamber and roughly shoved into a metal chair. His arms and legs were cuffed to the seat with thick shackles. A hulking imperial officer strode in, flanked by two armed guards. The officer loomed over Bruce, his multifaceted eyes glinting with malice. "'You will tell me the location of the rebel base, human filth,' the officer hissed. "'My patience wears thin.' Bruce glared back defiantly, his swollen lips sealed shut. The officer backhanded him viciously, splitting his cheek. Again and again the blows rained down, but Bruce endured the pain in stoic silence. Realizing he wouldn't crack easily, the officer gestured to the guards. Inject him with the SX-70 truth serum. That will loosen his tongue. As the guards approached with a wicked-looking syringe, Bruce tensed, coiled like a spring. In an explosive burst of motion, he snapped the shackles like they were made of paper. The metal was no match for his exoskeleton-enhanced strength. Bruce lunged forward, smashing his forehead into the officer's faceplate with a sickening crunch. Shards of exoskeleton sprayed everywhere as the officer stumbled back, shrieking. The guards opened fire, plasma bolts sizzling through the air. Bruce's armor soaked up the assault, dissipating the superheated energy. He fell upon the guards like a human battering ram. Bone shattered under his jackhammer blows. In seconds, they crumpled to the floor, broken and unmoving. The officer, blind with pain, fumbled for his sidearm. Bruce was on him in a flash, wrenching his head around with a moist snap. Moving quickly, Bruce stripped the uniform and helmet off one guard. The disguise was ill-fitting on his muscular frame, but it would have to do. He accessed a nearby terminal, his fingers flying over the controls. A schematic of the prison popped up. There, the cell block housing Linux's family. Bruce crept through the corridors, senses on high alert. Two guards rounded the corner ahead, pulse rifles at the ready. Without breaking stride, Bruce primed a plasma grenade and chucked it. The guards barely had time to shout before they were engulfed in a miniature sun reduced to ashen smears on the walls. The cell block door loomed before him, a monstrous slab of reinforced durasteel. Bruce placed a shaped charge on the hinges, thumbing the detonator. The explosion ripped through the air, tearing the door free in a shower of molten sparks. Inside, a ragged group of denobulans blinked at the sudden light. Among them, Linux's mate clutched their hatchlings close, eyeing Bruce warily as he approached. He removed his stolen helmet, his human features bringing a spark of recognition to her eyes. "'Your mate Linux sent me,' Bruce said, his voice rough with urgency. "'I'm here to get you out.' The mention of her beloved seemed to dispel her doubts. She gathered the other prisoners, urging them to their feet. Bruce led them to the guard armory, distributing rifles and sidearms. So "'We're going to have to fight our way out of here,' he told them grimly. Stay close, watch each other's backs, we'll get through this together. The ragtag band of rescuers and rescues assembled, their expressions hardening with determination. Outside, alarm klaxons began to blare as the breakout was discovered. The whole base would be on alert now. Bruce chambered around in his rifle, feeling the familiar battle calm settle over him. This was what he was made for. No matter the odds, he would get these people to safety or die trying. Failure was not an option. He met Linux's mate's eyes, saw the desperate hope shining there, and nodded resolutely. Let's move out. Claxons wailed through the prison camp as Bruce led the ragged band of denobulan prisoners towards the extraction point. Red lights strobed, bathing everything in a hellish glow. Bruce's heart pounded in his ears, adrenaline surging through his veins. Move, 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 he barked, urging the weakened prisoners to push themselves harder. They stumbled forward, their exoskeletons quivering with exhaustion. Suddenly a squad of Imperial soldiers rounded the corner ahead, pulse rifles leveled. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air, scorching the walls. Bruce's enhanced reflexes took over, his exoskeleton whirring as he dodged and weaved through the deadly barrage. He snapped his rifle to his shoulder, sighting down the barrel. 
The weapon bucked in his hands as he fired, armor shredding rounds tearing through the lead soldier's chestplate. The trooper crumpled, blood spraying. But more soldiers poured in, an endless tide of white armor and flashing blasters. Bruce gritted his teeth, realizing they were hopelessly outmatched. He spun, spotting a heavy door to their right, a storage warehouse. In here, he shouted, herding the prisoners through the doorway. His fingers flew over the control panel, overriding the lock. The door slammed shut, sealing them inside. Bruce knew it was only a temporary reprieve. The Imperials would cut through soon enough. He scanned the warehouse desperately, searching for anything that could aid their escape. His gaze landed on a row of hulking shapes at the far end, experimental hover tanks, their armor gleaming dully. A plan formed in his mind, equal parts crazy and brilliant. He sprinted to the nearest tank, yanking open an access panel. Sparks flew as he hot-wired the ignition, the engine roaring to life. Everyone get in, Bruce waved the prisoners over. They piled into the cramped hold, wide-eyed and terrified. Linux's mate clutched her hatchlings close as Bruce sealed the hatch. A thunderous boom shook the warehouse as the Imperials breached the door. Bruce gunned the throttle, the hover tank surging forward. It smashed through the far wall in an avalanche of twisted metal and ferrocrete. The prison yard was a scene of utter chaos, swarming with Imperial troops. Blaster fire pinged off the hover tank's armoured hull as Bruce swung the turret around. The plasma cannon whined. Lances of superheated energy vaporizing everything in their path. Bruce carved a blazing trail through the enemy forces, the hover tank bucking and jolting as it raced towards the extraction point. Up ahead, he spotted a familiar shape, Linux's transport ship, its engines flaring. The ship's rear hatch yawned open, a gaping maw. Bruce angled the hover tank towards it, coaxing every last ounce of speed from the straining repulsors. Plasma bolts sizzled past, the Imperials in hot pursuit. With a bone-jarring crunch, the hover tank slammed into the cargo bay. The hatch sealed behind them, muffling the sounds of battle. Bruce felt the deck shudder as Linux hit the thrusters, catapulting them into the sky. In the hold, Bruce helped the shell-shocked prisoners out of the hover tank. Linux vaulted down from the cockpit, his multifaceted eyes shimmering with emotion, he swept his mate and hatchlings into a fierce embrace, their antennae entwining. After a long moment, Linux turned to Bruce, clasping his hand firmly. I can never repay you for this, my friend. You've saved my family, my people. We owe you everything. At this, Linux's mate stepped forward, her exoskeleton still trembling from their harrowing escape. I overheard the guards speaking of it, they said it was being held in a hidden research facility deep in the wastelands. I can guide you there. Bruce and Linux exchanged a look, the same grim determination etched on their faces. The stakes had never been higher. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. Then that's where we're going, Bruce said, checking the charge on his rifle. We'll find that facility and destroy the weapon, no matter what it takes. This isn't over. The stolen Imperial transport punched through the planet's atmosphere, Bruce at the helm. Linux's mate directed him towards a mountain range looming on the horizon, its peaks shrouded in mist. As they approached, a cluster of Imperial warships came into view, orbiting the planet like bloated metallic vultures. Linux's antennae quivered nervously. Bruce nodded grimly, his mind racing. We won't have to, I've got a plan. He turned to Linux. Broadcast a distress signal on Imperial channels. Say our ship was damaged in an asteroid field and we need emergency repairs at the research facility. Linux's eyes widened in understanding. His fingers flew over the comm panel, crafting the false message. They waited with bated breath until a curt Imperial voice crackled over the speakers. Transport VX-372. You are cleared for emergency landing at research facility Zeta. Transmit your security codes for verification. Bruce punched in the codes lifted from the guard he'd impersonated at the prison camp. A tense beat passed before the voice returned. Codes verified. Proceed to landing bay Alpha. Deviate from your assigned flight path and you will be destroyed. The comm clicked off. 
Bruce exhaled heavily as he angled the ship towards the planet's surface. As they descended through the wispy clouds, a shimmering energy dome came into view, encasing the hidden facility like a protective bubble. Blast, Bruce muttered. Should have known they'd have shield generators. We'll need to disable those before we can even think about getting inside. The transport settled onto the landing pad with a hiss of hydraulics. Bruce powered down the engines and turned to face Linux and the small group of freed prisoners. All right, here's the plan, he said, his voice low and urgent. Linux, you're with me. We'll scout out the facility, find a way to take down those shields. The rest of you, stay with the ship. If things go south, you take off and don't look back, understand? Linux's mate stepped forward, her exoskeleton still bearing the scars of Imperial torture. We're not leaving without you, she said fiercely. Bruce shook his head. Your priority is keeping your hatchlings safe. That's what we're fighting for, promise me. She held his gaze for a long moment, before finally nodding, her antennae drooping in acquiescence. Bruce and Linux slipped out of the ship, the planet's muggy heat enveloping them like a suffocating blanket. They moved swiftly into the dense foliage ringing the facility, the broad leaves concealing their approach. At the edge of the tree line, Bruce crouched, surveying the terrain ahead. The facility was a sprawling complex of reinforced bunkers and towering comm arrays, all encircled by a crackling shield wall. Patrols of heavily armed Imperial soldiers roamed the perimeter, their exoskeletons glinting in the harsh sunlight. Bruce's enhanced vision zeroed in on a small access door set into the base of the shield generator. Getting in would be a challenge, but he had an idea. Lennox, he said, pulling a block of high-yield explosives from his pack. I need you to plant this on the far side of the compound, set it to detonate on my signal. That should draw the guards away from the generator. Linux took the explosive with a determined nod, his multifaceted eyes glinting. And what will you be doing? Bruce cracked a humorless smile, checking the charge on his rifle. What I do best, making a scene. As Linux crept off through the undergrowth, Bruce strode boldly out into the open, his stolen guard's uniform giving him a veneer of legitimacy. He marched up to the access door, schooling his features into an expression of grim urgency. The guards at the door leveled their weapons at him, suspicious. Bruce held up his hands in a placating gesture. Stand down, he barked, layering his voice with imperial authority. I have critical intelligence for the facility commander. The rebels are planning an imminent attack. The guards exchanged uncertain looks. Bruce held his breath, praying his bluff would hold. Finally, the lead guard lowered his rifle. We'll escort you to the commander the guard said gruffly. But if this is a trick, you'll be dead before you hit the ground. Bruce gave a curt nod, falling into step behind the guards as the access door hissed open. They marched through sterile white corridors, passing labs filled with bubbling vats and humming machinery. Scientists in imperial uniforms scurried to and fro, barely sparing them a glance. The guards led Bruce into a cavernous control room, dominated by a towering holographic display of the planet. And there, thrumming with barely contained power, was the shield generator. Bruce tensed, his finger itching to trigger Linux's distraction. Just a little closer. Suddenly a thunderous boom shook the facility, alarms blaring to life. On the display Bruce saw a plume of smoke billowing from the far side of the compound. Linux had detonated the explosives. The guards whirled in confusion, barking frantic orders into their comms. In their momentary distraction, Bruce lunged for the shield controls. But before his fingers could close around the interface, the doors of the control room slammed open. Bruce found himself staring down the barrels of a dozen Imperial rifles, a coldly furious denobulan in an Imperial commander's uniform at their center. I know you, the commander hissed, his eyes narrowing to venomous slits. The human from the prison break. Did you really think we wouldn't recognize you, even in that pathetic disguise? Bruce slowly raised his hands, mind racing. He needed to buy time for Linux to find another way in. He forced a smirk onto his face. The commander stalked forward, his exoskeleton rippling with barely contained rage. You will tell me how you found this place, and you will tell me now. 
before I peel the flesh from your bones, scream by scream. Bruce met the Denobulan's gaze steadily, his jaw set in a hard line. I think I'll pass on the torture, thanks. I'm not much for screaming. As the guards raised their rifles to fire, the far wall of the control room exploded inward in a hail of metal and sparks. Linux came charging through the breach, his plasma rifle spitting blue fire. The guards scattered, diving for cover. In the chaos, Bruce wrenched a rifle from the nearest guard's hands and opened up on full auto, spraying the room with blistering plasma bolts. He and Linux fought back to back, their weapons roaring, downing Imperial soldiers left and right. The sharp stench of ozone and charred exoskeleton choked the air. In minutes it was over. The floor was littered with the smoking corpses of the guards, the control room's displays flickering and sparking from stray plasma bolts. But the Imperial commander was nowhere to be seen. In the confusion, he had slipped away. Bruce raced to the shield controls, his fingers flying over the interface. With a descending hum, the energy field encasing the facility flickered and died. Bruce turned to Linux, the ghost of a grim smile on his lips. Come on, let's go find that weapon before the commander does. Bruce and Linux crept through the research facility's winding corridors, the sterile white walls pressing in around them. Signs pointed the way to the high security labs, their objective drawing closer with each turn. The pounding of Imperial boots echoed from up ahead. Bruce signaled Linux to halt, pressing himself against the wall. A squad of Denobulan soldiers rounded the corner, pulse rifles at the ready. Bruce lunged out, his exoskeleton propelling him forward with inhuman speed. He slammed into the lead soldier, crushing his chestplate with a sickening crunch. Linux opened fire, plasma bolts sizzling through the air. The Imperials fell back their weapons spitting deadly energies. Bruce wove through the barrage, his augmented reflexes guiding him. He closed the distance, smashing his fists into the soldiers with bone-shattering force. Linux pressed forward, his aim true, downing the stragglers with precise headshots. They pushed deeper into the facility, leaving a trail of broken denobulan bodies in their wake. Bruce's face was grim, his knuckles slick with blood. This was what he was made for, the brutal calculus of war. Rounding another corner, they stumbled upon a group of cowering Denobulan scientists. The researchers threw up their hands, pleading for mercy as they realized Bruce and Linux weren't Imperial troops. Bruce grabbed the nearest scientist by the front of his lab coat, slamming him against the wall. The weapon, where is it? he growled. The scientist stammered incoherently, his multifaceted eyes wide with terror. A female Denobulan stepped forward, her voice trembling but determined. I'm Zara. I can take you to the weapon, but I want your word you'll protect me. Bruce studied her for a long moment before giving a curt nod. Fine. But if you're lying, I'll make you wish the Empire had you. Zara led them through a maze of corridors, descending into the bowels of the facility. They arrived at a massive blast door its surface etched with strange glyphs. As they approached, the door ground open with a hiss of hydraulics. Beyond lay a cavernous vault, its walls lined with pulsing conduits, and there in the centre of the room stood Commander Zektar, flanked by a phalanx of elite guards. In his grasp was a small spherical device, its surface alive with swirling energies. You're too late, Zektar crowed, with this weapon, the Empire will be invincible. A new age dawns, and your pitiful rebellion will be nothing more than a footnote in history. Bruce and Linux opened fire, plasma bolts streaking towards the Imperials. But Zektar's guards were no ordinary soldiers. Their armor shrugged off the assault, their return fire forcing Bruce and Linux into cover. The battle raged, the air thick with the stench of ozone and scorched flesh. Bruce felt his exoskeleton strain under the onslaught, warning indicators flashing across his HUD. Beside him, Linux cried out as a plasma bolt seared his shoulder. Suddenly Zara darted forward, a blur of desperate motion. She snatched the weapon from Zektar's hand, turning to run. The Imperial commander roared with rage, leveling his pistol. A bolt of searing light lanced out, punching through Zara's back. She crumpled, the device tumbling from her grasp. 
Bruce lunged, scooping up the weapon as it clattered to the floor. He could feel it thrumming with barely contained power, an ancient and terrible force. In a last, desperate gambit, he thumbed the activation switch. The device flared to life, pulsing with blinding radiance. Zektar's eyes widened, fear etched on his features. He barked an order, and his guards fell back, retreating from the vault. Bruce stood alone with Linux, the weapon's glow casting eerie shadows across their faces. He could feel it, burrowing into his mind, a searing agony that threatened to consume him. The world tilted, his vision tunneling. The last thing Bruce saw before unconsciousness claimed him was Linux, his face a mask of concern rushing to his side, then only darkness. Bruce's head throbbed as he slowly regained consciousness. Blinking away the fog, he found himself sprawled on the cold metal floor of the stolen Imperial transport. Linux's concerned face swam into view above him. You activated it in the vault. There was a blinding flash and you collapsed, I thought. Linux's voice wavered. I feared the worst, but I got you out, back to the ship. Bruce looked around, registering the anxious faces of the Denobulan prisoners. And Zekta, the Imperial Guards? Fled before the weapon's power. The facility lies in ruins. A flicker of hope danced in Linux's eyes. We did it, Bruce. We have the weapon. The mission was a success. Cheers erupted from the Denobulans, their emaciated frames shaking with relief and joy. Bruce struggled to his feet, a half-smile tugging at his lips. But before he could speak, the ship lurched violently, alarms blaring. Proximity alert! Linux shouted, scrambling for the cockpit. Bruce staggered after him, steadying himself against the bulkheads. Through the viewport, a nightmarish sight greeted them. A fleet of Imperial warships had dropped out of hyperspace, surrounding their tiny transport like sharks circling wounded prey. Attention, rebel scum! A sneering voice crackled over the comm, dripping with menace. This is Commander Zektar of the Imperial Navy. Surrender the artifact and prepare to be boarded. Attempt to flee, and you will be annihilated. Bruce's blood ran cold. They were hopelessly outgunned. But as he turned to Linux in despair, he noticed something odd. Suddenly a searing pain lanced through Bruce's skull. He cried out, doubling over as images flooded his mind's eye. Star charts, ancient glyphs, swirling galaxies, and with stunning clarity, he understood. The weapon! It's not what we thought, Bruce gasped, staggering to the navigation console. His fingers flew over the controls, inputting coordinates that swam in his brain. When I activated it, it... it showed me... Showed you what? Linux gripped his shoulder, perplexed. Bruce, what are you doing? It's not a weapon. It's a key. A key to an ancient network of wormholes spanning the galaxy. Bruce's eyes shone with the fervor of revelation. If we can just reach the nearest node, we can escape. Escape to where? Bruce locked eyes with Linux, a grim smile on his lips. To the heart of the Empire itself, it's time to take the fight to them. Understanding dawned on Linux's face. Nodding resolutely, he manned the co-pilot's station, his claws dancing over the controls. Then let us fly, my friend. The stolen ship banked hard, its engines flaring as Bruce gunned the thrusters. The Imperial fleet, sensing their intent, opened fire. Sizzling plasma bolts streaked past the viewports, the transport's shields shimmering under the onslaught. Bruce and Linux wove through the barrage, the ship bucking and jolting like a wild beast. Alarms wailed, red lights flashing as the shields strained to the breaking point. In the hold, the Denobulan prisoners clung to each other, terrified. Ahead, a swirling vortex of light and shadow bloomed against the starscape. The wormhole node, its edges crackling with eldritch energy. Bruce held course, even as the ship shuddered and groaned around him. With a bone-jarring impact, a plasma bolt punched through their rear deflectors. Smoke belched from shattered conduits, the acrid stench of burning plastic filling the air. Shields at ten percent, Linux cried, his voice tight with strain. Bruce, we cannot take another hit. Bruce's jaw clenched, 
sweat beading his brow as he coaxed every last ounce of speed from the straining engines. The wormhole loomed before them, a yawning abyss hungry to swallow them whole. With a shaking hand he raised the ancient weapon, it pulsed in his grip, thrumming with eldritch power. As he thumbed the activation stud, the device exploded with searing white light, engulfing the cockpit. The ship lurched forward, the wormhole expanding to a swirling maelstrom of light and shadow. It engulfed the battered transport, the Imperial fleet fading to insignificance behind them. Reality twisted, stretching like taffy as they plunged into the kaleidoscopic tunnel. Colors and lights danced across the viewports, shapes and shadows moving at impossible angles. Bruce felt his sanity fraying at the edges, his mind struggling to comprehend the incomprehensible. Distantly, he heard Linux retching, the Denobulan prisoners screaming in existential terror. But he could only stare into the abyss, his eyes wide and unblinking. And then, with a gut-wrenching lurch, they were through. The wormhole snapped shut behind them, the madness and chaos replaced by an eerie calm. Dazed, Bruce dragged his gaze to the forward viewports and beheld the impossible. Outside, hanging in the starless void like a bloated spider, was a massive construct of twisting metal and pulsing lights. Towering spires stabbed upwards from its surface, crackling with malevolent energy. A thousand ships, each one dwarfing their stolen transport, swarmed around it like worker drones servicing their queen. By the void, Linux breathed, his voice thick with horror. It cannot be... But it was. Bruce stared out at the looming monstrosity, a cold dread settling into his bones. He knew with grim certainty where the wormhole had taken them. To the very heart of the Empire, to the Imperial throne world itself. Bruce and Linux huddled over a holographic schematic of the Imperial Palace, the ancient weapon pulsing softly on the table beside them. Bruce's brow furrowed as he traced a path through the labyrinthine corridors. If we can get a strike team through here, he tapped a glowing red vein, we'd have a straight shot to the Emperor's throne room. Linux nodded, his multifaceted eyes gleaming with determination. A bold plan, but we'll need our best fighters to pull it off. Bruce rose, his exoskeleton whirring softly. I'll lead the team myself, handpick the most capable denobulans from the prisoners we rescued. I'm coming with you, Linux said firmly, his tone brooking no argument. You're not facing this alone. Bruce clasped his friend's shoulder, a rare smile cracking his weathered face. Wouldn't have it any other way. As they prepared to depart, Linux's mate caught his arm, her eyes shimmering with unshed tears. Please, my love, don't go. We need you here. Your hatchlings need you. Linux gathered her in his arms, his heart torn between duty and family. I must do this for all our sakes. If we don't stop the Emperor now, our children will never know peace. With a final embrace, Linux joined Bruce and their assembled team aboard a sleek shuttlecraft. As they rocketed towards the palace, Bruce cradled the ancient weapon in his hands, feeling its thrumming power. At his signal, the device flared to life, ripping open a swirling vortex directly ahead. The shuttle plunged into the wormhole, reality kaleidoscoping around them. And emerged in the heart of the Imperial Palace, alarms shrieking at their sudden appearance. Bruce and his team leapt from the shuttle, weapons blazing, as a swarm of Imperial guards flooded the Grand Atrium. Plasma bolts crisscrossed the cavernous space, sizzling past Bruce's head as he dove for cover. His exoskeleton absorbed the shots that found their mark, its integrated shielding flaring. The Denobulan strike team moved with preternatural grace, their own exosuits enhancing their insectoid agility. They danced through the hail of enemy fire, closing with the guards in a whirlwind of chitinous limbs and flashing blades. Bruce led the charge, his rifle spitting armor-piercing rounds. Each shot found an imperial faceplate, puncturing the reinforced plating like tissue paper. He vaulted over a balustrade, his suit's servos propelling him into the midst of the enemy formation. The guardsmen fell before him like wheat before a scythe, his augmented strength making a mockery of their defenses. Beside him, Linux unleashed devastation with a pair of plasma rifles, 
the searing bolts leaving glowing holes in the Imperial's armor. They fought their way deeper into the palace, the ornate corridors becoming a blur of smoke and blood. Bruce's HUD flickered with casualties as his team dwindled, each life snuffed out a knife to his heart. But they pushed forward, an unstoppable force, the Emperor's sanctum drawing ever closer. The resistance intensified as they neared their goal, the palace's defenders throwing themselves into the meat grinder with fanatical devotion. At last they reached the final hallway, the massive doors of the throne room looming before them. It was here that the Emperor's personal guard made their stand, the cream of the Imperial crop. A hurricane of plasma fire erupted from their ranks, scything through the strike team's front line. Bruce watched in horror as his comrades fell, their exoskeletons ruptured and smouldering. With a roar of fury, he and Linux charged into the breach, their weapons spitting death. They fought like men possessed, a whirlwind of destruction, the guardsmen falling before them. The doors to the throne room burst open, disgorging a fresh wave of defenders. Bruce and Linux met them head-on, a collision of unstoppable force and immovable object. In the end they stood victorious, the Emperor's guard lying broken at their feet. But the cost had been high. Only a handful of the strike team remained, their armor pitted and scorched. With no time to mourn the fallen, Bruce and Linux stormed into the throne room, weapons leveled at the figure rising from the throne. The Emperor was a towering denobulan, clad in an ornate battle suit of gleaming black chitin. He regarded the intruders with cold, pitiless eyes, drawing a massive plasma glaive from his back. Bruce Scora, he hissed his voice dripping with contempt. The legendary mercenary. I've long dreamed of killing you myself. Bruce stepped forward, his rifle trained on the Emperor's head. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing about you. The Emperor laughed, a harsh grating sound. You think you can best me in single combat? I, who have conquered worlds and ground galaxies beneath my heel? He leveled his glaive at Bruce, the blade humming with barely contained energy. I accept your challenge, human. Come and die on my blade, and I will mount your head on my throne. Bruce glanced at Linux, a wordless exchange passing between them. With a nod, he stepped forward, slinging his rifle and drawing a pair of gleaming power blades. Let's dance, you son of a bitch. The Emperor lunged, his glaive a blur of crackling plasma. Bruce met him head on, his blades sparking as they clashed. The throne room echoed with the ring of steel on steel as the titans battled. Linux and the surviving strike team could only watch in awe as the duel raged, the fate of galaxies hanging on each blow. Bruce fought with the strength of a man possessed, his exoskeleton whirring and straining to match the Emperor's augmented might. The glaive sliced through the air, seeking Bruce's heart. He parried, riposted, his blades a whirlwind of flashing silver. The Emperor pressed the attack, forcing Bruce back with each earth-shattering blow. But Bruce was unrelenting, unyielding. He met the Emperor's fury with his own, the fire of a thousand suns burning in his eyes. The Emperor's glaive slammed into Bruce's power blades, with the force of a rampaging bull nearly knocking the human off his feet. Bruce gritted his teeth, feeling the impact reverberate up his arms even through the exoskeleton, he countered with a lightning-fast riposte, but the Emperor parried effortlessly, his chitinous face twisted into a sneer. You fight well for a primate, the Emperor spat, pressing his attack. His glaive was a blur of humming plasma, forcing Bruce back step by step. But you are no match for Denobulan supremacy. Your species is a cosmic joke, a mewling infant race unfit to suckle at the teat of the galaxy. Bruce said nothing, conserving his breath, he focused on the flow of combat, letting his exoskeleton-enhanced reflexes guide him. He ducked a decapitating slash, then launched into a dizzying offensive, his twin blades weaving a web of razor steel. The Emperor backpedaled, momentarily on the defensive. Humanity's time has come, Bruce growled, punctuating each word with a bone-jarring strike. We cast off our shackles and stand tall among the stars. Your empire is a relic a fossilized tyrant choking the life from a thousand worlds. The Emperor snarled, redoubling his assault. His glaive moved in a dazzling pattern, 
its plasma trail searing Bruce's retinas, the human felt a line of fire erupt across his ribs as the tip of the Emperor's blade found a gap in his armor. Blood welled, but Bruce pushed the pain aside, lost in the whirlwind dance of death. The duel reached a crescendo, the clashing of blade against blade ringing through the throne room like the fury of gods at war. Bruce and the Emperor spun and whirled, their movements a blur, each seeking the slightest opening to land a killing blow. Linux and the strike team could only watch in awe, the spectacle unlike anything they had ever witnessed. Suddenly the Emperor leapt back, his glaive held defensively. Bruce, sensing a trick, kept his distance, blades at the ready. Bah, I tire of this farce, the Emperor sneered. Witness the folly of defying the might of the Denobulan Empire. With a flick of his wrist, the Emperor activated a hidden control on his armor. A pulse of crackling energy burst from his chestplate, washing over Bruce like a tidal wave. The human screamed as the neural disruptor played havoc with his exoskeleton systems. Servos locked, hydraulics seized, and Bruce found himself frozen in place, a statue of snarled rage. The Emperor cackled, advancing on his paralyzed foe. His glaive rose and fell, battering Bruce's immobilized form. Sparks flew as the plasma blade bit into Bruce's armor, each blow cracking the ceramic plating and pulverizing the flesh beneath. Blood flew from Bruce's mouth as the strikes rattled his teeth, his organs feeling like they were being shaken apart. With a final titanic blow, the Emperor shattered Bruce's chestplate, sending the human crashing to the floor in a heap of broken armor and shredded meat. The Emperor towered over him, glaive poised for the killing stroke. Bruce, barely conscious, could only watch through a red haze of pain as death descended towards him. At the last instant, a battle cry pierced the throne room. Linux, seeing his friend about to be slaughtered, hurled himself at the Emperor in a desperate flying tackle. The two Denobulans crashed to the ground in a tangle of thrashing limbs and shrieking servos. Linux rolled to his feet, plasma blades extended. The Emperor rose to meet him, glaive held high. The two titans clashed, their exoskeletons ringing like hammer on anvil. They dueled across the throne room, leaping from wall to wall, their blades leaving molten scars in the reinforced metal. Linux fought with the fury of a man possessed, the thought of his family's safety lending him strength. He parried a crushing overhead blow, then lunged inside the Emperor's guard. His blade licked out, shearing through the joint of the Emperor's glaive arm with a spray of sparks and boiling ichor. The Emperor howled in agony as his arm, still clutching the glaive, spun away across the floor. He staggered back, his remaining hand clutching the spurting stump. Linux stepped forward grimly, blades leveled at the Emperor's throat. Yield, Linux clicked, his voice cold and implacable. Your reign is at an end. The Emperor spat a gobbet of blood, his eyes blazing with madness and hate. Never, I will not bow to lesser beings. I am the Empire. I am... His words dissolved into a gurgling scream as Bruce, having dragged himself to the Emperor's side, rammed a power blade up under the tyrant's shattered chestplate and into his black heart. The Emperor convulsed, Ikor gushing from his mouth, then toppled backwards, Bruce's blade slicing free in a spray of gore. Silence descended on the throne room, broken only by the sizzling of ruptured electronics and the rasping of Bruce's laboured breathing. Linux looked down at the fallen Emperor, then at Bruce, awe and respect mingling in his compound gaze. It's over, Bruce croaked, his voice a ruin. We did it, we won! Linux nodded slowly, the weight of the moment settling on his carapace like a mantle. He turned to the strike team, raising his blades high. The Emperor is dead, he cried, his voice ringing with triumph. The Empire has fallen, Denobula is free. The strike team erupted into cheers, pumping their fists and firing their weapons into the air. The sound was deafening, a cacophony of joy and relief that echoed to the stars themselves. Bruce slumped back against the wall, a small smile tugging at his bloodied lips. He knew the road ahead would be long and hard, that rebuilding a shattered galaxy would take generations. But for now, in this moment of victory snatched from the jaws of defeat, he allowed himself to savor the sweet taste of freedom.
In the days following the Emperor's fall, Bruce and Linux worked side by side to lay the foundations of a new Denobulan society. They met with the leaders of the various rebel factions, brokering deals and forging alliances. Bruce's tactical mind and Linux's impassioned rhetoric proved a potent combination, uniting the fractious groups under a common banner. The ancient weapon, now secured in a heavily guarded vault, became a symbol of the Denobulans' hard-won freedom. Under Bruce's guidance, Denobulan scientists began studying the artifact, unlocking the secrets of the wormhole network it controlled. Soon, ships bearing the crest of the fledgling Denobulan alliance were traversing the galaxy, reconnecting long-lost colonies and establishing trade routes. As the weeks turned into months, the Denobulan homeworld began to heal. The scars of the Empire's oppression slowly faded, replaced by a newfound sense of hope and unity. Linux, his natural charisma and leadership skills shining through, found himself at the forefront of the new government. He worked tirelessly to draft a constitution, establish a representative council, and lay the groundwork for free elections. Through it all, Bruce remained by his side, a constant source of support and advice. The bond between the human and the Denobulan, forged in the crucible of war, had grown into an unbreakable friendship. They spent long hours in council chambers and strategy sessions, their combined intellect and determination driving the rebuilding effort forward. But as the Denobulan alliance took shape, Bruce began to feel a growing sense of restlessness. He was a soldier, a warrior, not a politician. The endless meetings and diplomatic wrangling left him feeling stifled, yearning for the adrenaline rush of combat. He knew that his work on Denobula was important, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he didn't truly belong. One evening, as the twin sons of the Denobulan homeworld dipped below the horizon, Bruce found Linux standing on a balcony overlooking the capital city. The Denobulan leader turned to face his friend, his compound eyes glinting in the fading light. You're leaving, aren't you? Linux asked, his voice tinged with sadness. Bruce nodded, his jaw tight. I have to. This, this isn't my world, Linux. I'm a fighter, not a builder. Linux placed a chitinous hand on Bruce's shoulder, his touch firm and reassuring. I understand, my friend, but know this. You will always have a home here among us. What you've done for my people, it can never be repaid. With a final nod, Bruce turned and strode towards the landing pad where his ship awaited. As he climbed into the cockpit and fired up the engines, he couldn't help but feel a pang of regret. He was leaving behind the closest thing to a family he had ever known, a band of comrades who had fought and bled beside him. But he knew that his path lay elsewhere. He was a wanderer, a soldier of fortune, not a statesman. As the ship lifted off and soared into the star-strewn sky, Bruce felt the old, familiar thrill of anticipation course through his veins. New adventures awaited, new battles to be fought. He just hoped that somewhere out there he would find the same sense of purpose that he had known on Denobula. Months passed, and Bruce found himself falling back into his old ways. He took on mercenary contracts across the fringe worlds of human space, his reputation as a fearless fighter and tactician growing with each successful job. He fought pirates, slavers, and warlords, his exosuit and arsenal of advanced weapons making him a one-man army. But something had changed. The thrill of battle once his lifeblood now felt hollow and empty. He found himself longing for the camaraderie he had known with Linux and the Denobulan rebels, the sense that he was fighting for something greater than himself. The credits he earned once his sole motivation now felt like ashes in his mouth. One day, as he sat in the dingy bar of a backwater spaceport, nursing a whiskey and nursing his wounds, after a particularly brutal job, his comlink buzzed with an incoming message. He almost ignored it, assuming it was just another contract offer. But something made him pause, a flicker of intuition that he couldn't quite place. He activated the message, and a set of coordinates flashed across the screen, along with a single word. Come... The message was unsigned, the sender's identity hidden behind layers of encryption. Bruce felt a chill run down his spine, a sense of foreboding that he couldn't shake. Against his better judgment, he plugged the coordinates into his ship's nav computer and set a course, 
As the stars streaked past his view screen, he couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement, a flicker of the old fire that had once driven him. Whatever awaited him at those coordinates, he knew that it would be a challenge worthy of his skills. As he approached the remote planet, a sense of unease began to grow in the pit of his stomach. The world was a barren, lifeless rock, devoid of any signs of civilization. But as he entered orbit and began to scan the surface, his senses picked up a faint energy signature, emanating from a hidden base carved into the side of a mountain. He set his ship down on a rocky plateau a few clicks from the base, his exosuit hissing as he stepped out onto the planet's surface. The air was thin and cold, the sky a sickly shade of grey. Bruce checked his weapons, ensuring that his rifle was fully charged and his grenades were primed. Whatever awaited him inside that base, he would be ready. As he approached the entrance, a sense of foreboding washed over him. The base was heavily fortified, its walls bristling with automated turrets and energy shields. But what truly set Bruce's nerves on edge was the insignia emblazoned above the entrance, a stylized human skull wreathed in flames. He recognized it instantly, a symbol that he had seen before in briefings and intelligence reports. It was the mark of a shadowy human organization, one that was rumored to be pulling the strings behind countless conflicts across the galaxy. Bruce's mind raced as he hacked the base's security systems, his implants making short work of the firewalls. What was this organization doing here, on this godforsaken rock, and why had they summoned him, of all people? As the doors slid open and he stepped inside, he knew that he was about to find out. The interior of the base was a labyrinth of corridors and chambers, filled with advanced technology and weaponry. Bruce moved silently through the halls, his exosuit sensors scanning for any signs of life. But the base seemed deserted, as if its occupants had fled in a hurry. As he delved deeper into the facility, he began to uncover the truth behind its purpose. Data terminals and hollow displays revealed a vast network of covert operations stretching across the galaxy. The organization had been manipulating events from behind the scenes for decades, stoking conflicts and toppling governments to advance their own agenda. And at the center of it all was a familiar face, a figure that Bruce had thought long dead. Admiral Zector, the Imperial commander who had escaped during the raid on the Denobulan research facility, stood before him, a cruel smile twisting his features. Welcome, Bruce, Zector said, his voice dripping with malice. I see you received my invitation. Bruce's grip tightened on his rifle, his finger hovering over the trigger. What is this place, Zektar? What have you done? The Admiral laughed, a harsh grating sound. What have I done? I've been working to ensure humanity's rightful place as the masters of the galaxy. The Denobulan conflict was just a means to an end, a way to weaken the alien races and pave the way for our ascendancy. Bruce's mind reeled as the pieces fell into place. The secret human organization, the manipulation of the Denobulan rebels, the ancient weapon. It had all been part of Zektar's plan, a twisted scheme to establish human dominance through subterfuge and violence. You used me, Bruce growled, his voice shaking with rage. You use Linux and his people as pawns in your sick game. Zektar shrugged, his expression one of smug satisfaction. And what if I did? The ends justify the means, Bruce. Humanity deserves to rule, and I will do whatever it takes to make that happen. Bruce snapped, lunging at Zektar with a roar of fury. The Admiral drew his own weapon, a sleek plasma pistol, and the two warriors clashed in a whirlwind of violence. They fought through the corridors of the base, their weapons flashing and sparking as they traded blows. Zektar was a formidable opponent, his own exosuit augmenting his strength and speed. But Bruce was driven by a righteous anger, a burning need to make the Admiral pay for his crimes. He fought with a savagery that he had never known, his blades and fists striking with bone-crushing force. In the end, it was Bruce who emerged victorious, standing over Zektar's broken body as the base burned around them. The Admiral, his face a ruin of shattered bone and pulped flesh, looked up at Bruce with a final, defiant sneer. "'You think you've won?' he rasped, his voice bubbling with blood. "'You've only delayed the inevitable. Humanity will rise, and there's nothing you can do to stop it.' 
With a final gurgling breath, Zektar died, taking his secrets with him. Bruce stood amidst the wreckage of the base, his armor battered and scorched, his mind reeling with the implications of what he had learned. He knew that he had to get back to Linux to warn him of the danger that lurked in the shadows. But as he stumbled back to his ship, he couldn't shake the feeling of despair that had settled over him like a shroud. He had fought so hard, sacrificed so much, only to discover that he had been a pawn in a game beyond his understanding. As he set course for Denobulan space, Bruce felt a hollow emptiness in his chest, a sense of betrayal that cut him to the core. He had believed in the cause, in the fight for freedom and justice. But now, he didn't know what to believe anymore. When he landed on the Denobulan homeworld, he found Linux waiting for him, his compound eyes wide with concern. The Denobulan leader could see the pain and confusion etched on Bruce's face, the weight of the revelations he carried. Bruce, what's wrong? Linux asked, his voice soft and gentle. What happened out there? And so, in halting, painful words, Bruce told him everything. He spoke of Zektar's betrayal, of the secret human organization that had orchestrated the conflict from the shadows. He spoke of the lies and manipulation, of the bitter truth that he had been nothing more than a tool in their schemes. Linux listened in silence, his expression growing more and more somber with each passing moment. When Bruce finished, the Denobulan reached out and placed a hand on his shoulder, his touch firm and reassuring. I'm sorry, Bruce, he said, his voice heavy with emotion. I'm sorry that you had to bear this burden alone, but you must know that none of this was your fault. You fought for what you believed in, for the freedom and dignity of my people. That is a noble thing, no matter what lies behind it. Bruce nodded, his eyes stinging with unshed tears. He knew that Linux was right, that he had done what he thought was just, but the knowledge of the betrayal still cut deep, a wound that would take time to heal. What do we do now, he asked, his voice hoarse and raw. How do we move forward, knowing what we know? Linux was silent for a long moment, his compound eyes distant and thoughtful. When he spoke, his voice was filled with a quiet determination. We do what we have always done, he said. We fight for what is right, for the future that we believe in. We build a galaxy where all races can live in peace and harmony, where the strong do not prey upon the weak. It will not be easy, and there will be those who oppose us at every turn. But we will not falter and we will not fail. Bruce felt a flicker of hope kindle in his chest, a tiny spark of light amidst the darkness. He knew that Linux was right, that the road ahead would be long and difficult. But he also knew that he would not have to walk it alone. As the twin suns of the Denobulan homeworld dipped below the horizon, casting the world in a warm golden glow, Bruce and Linux stood side by side, united in their resolve. They had been through hell together, had fought and bled and sacrificed for the cause of freedom. And though the future was uncertain, they knew that they would face it together, bound by the unbreakable bonds of friendship and shared purpose. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.